How this brand grew to 1,000 followers without dropping anything. Now, I know you saw the title and got very excited, but it would be irresponsible for me not to give you a disclaimer of the key things that you need to know. As a brand, followers shouldn't be your main focus. This video is not condoning you to fixate on followers and go out to do anything to grow them. It's to show you ideas and advice on how to manage your brand as a small brand owner. Yes, followers are important, but in the long term, it should come after important things, such as making sure you have a good product and presenting your brand well from your website to social media. Ensure your brand actually has demand and that your products are selling. You don't want to become a brand with a huge amount of followers, but you have no demand. I also want to note the quality of followers is more important than the quantity. This is one of the key lessons I learned growing undiscovered. At one point, I wanted to reach certain milestones fast and over the months, I realized the quality is much more important and overall better in the long term. It helps with engagement and building a loyal audience who are generally interested in what you do. This means instead of going for any follow, first set the correct infrastructure for your page and brand. Do this by having a good product and actually posting good content. Present your social media page as well for new people coming across your page. This way you'll attract people to your page instead of chasing people to follow. The best followers you'll get are people who will guard their own way to follow you without even mentioning it. Before we bring in the guest Jack to talk about his strategy, in a nutshell, he opened his first store once he hit 1,000 followers, basically incentivizing people to follow so that he can open the store for them to buy. He then liked stories and gave away free necklaces to the first 20 orders. Today, I'm here with Jack, owner of St. Virtuous. He's going to be kind of talking us through how he gained 1,000 followers for his clothing brand before he even dropped at all. So, Jack, introduce yourself, introduce your brand, and then, yeah, we'll pretty much get into the questions. I bet. Um, well, my name's Jack. I own Saints Virtues, and I started the brand about three, four months ago now. Wow. And okay. so, so, yeah, I'm 22, and... It's not my first brand, but it's the first one that's actually succeeded. So yeah, to be fair, a lot of brand owners, the brand that you see now is probably not their first brand. So it's pretty common. So Jack, so what was your kind of strategy to kind of get to 1000 followers? Talk, talk the audience kind of through, because obviously they don't exactly know the full story, but you've told me the story. So kind of tell the audience yeah. what you did and what your strategy was. Um. so basically like in the start, uh, I, obviously, I, I, I've done other brands before and like they've not succeeded for a lot of different reasons. And one of them was like, like being able to actually like capture like, like an audience and like giving them an incentive to like buy or like, you know, get involved in like your brand, you know? So like the first thing I did was literally just create like a goal, like a simple goal, like get me to a thousand and I'll open the store. You know, and by this point, I already had everything ready. So it was just a case of kind of just engaging with people and sort of trying to build up a community, you know, doing it that way. And so, yeah, it kind of kind of went well because, I don't know, I just kind of like, it just kind of kept building, like people kept yeah. commenting yeah. and like people would repost it and it was the reposting that like helped out a yeah, lot as well. Yeah, so. that's, that's, that's basically where a lot of the exposure and the growth comes from when people would repost your stuff. So yeah, that's pretty great. Um, yeah. So how many followers are you on right now? I think it's about 3,000... 800 i think yeah. we just hit 3800 that's massive because the last time we yeah. talked i think you're on about yeah. 1000 some something so yeah you've been putting in the work so basically like other strategies i, I use is hitting up as many um like clothing pages that would repost my stuff and obviously one of them was yourselves <laughs> yeah but it's like yeah so, so that helped out a lot as well um because it's like when you're starting a brand, it's like super hard to like put it out to people, like get it in front of them, you know, but these pages like who already have like a big following, yeah. you know, it, you know, it, 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 it does help out like quite a bit. Yeah. Um, I guess also like liking people, like, like liking people's like stories and yeah, liking yeah. their- I actually post. saw some of your uh, story likes on my personal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. So I just go through, bro. I just go through, and I like like stories, yeah. like fucking basically through that way, and uh, and that's a lot better 
to try and introduce your brand rather than like, you know, just like spamming people with like a message. Yeah. Cause 100%. it's like, basically like if, if you're out on the street, which this is a, another thing I put in here was if you're out on the street and someone's handing out flyers, like you're not going to stop for them if they're just like, yo, here's a flyer. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like you're, yeah. you're more likely to engage if they're like, yo, I like what you're wearing. Like da, 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 you know, you start a conversation, you know? Yeah. So a lot better that way than, you know, spamming people like, the website's live, like, yo, check out my hoodie, you know what I mean? Because people just don't care. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Like, yeah, and I get, you see so many of these spam me- messages every single day. So it's, it's, it's nice to see that someone's kind of, you know, taken that into uh, consideration and thought of something else to do instead. That's obviously way more effective as well. Um, yeah. So, of course, with, with that strategy, in terms of the results, what, what what kind of did you see coming to fruition with all the work that you did? Everything is like a psychological kind of game. Like that's what all these big brands do, you know, that's how they like reel you in. Mm. And so, you know, um, when you're marketing to someone, like you want to put yourself in their shoes, you know, like you want to look at like what, like you want to look at your past experiences and look at what made you actually buy something like was it because like a friend was telling you all about it or was it because like the way the the brand post you know was shown to you or is it the way you know is it just you're seeing a lot really often you know it's just it it you know one of those things made you buy something you know Mm -hmm. and that's what you need to like kind of look back on and kind of be like ah you know i could do a couple of these things yeah so Within the first two weeks, uh, using these methods, we'd gone to 1.5k, and we'd already made like 3k in revenue, yeah. which is like insane for like such a small brand. Yeah, that's absurd. And, uh, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, basically, ever since like basically ever since then, it's just been like it's been growing every day. Like I gained something like 50 to maybe 60 70 followers a day some days not like not so much but like that's like the the mean that's like the average you know yeah i really really, really, yeah i really like how you kind of mentioned (laughs) that especially and you did that all before you uh you gained those followers before you even dropped at all correct yeah yeah exactly so it just it just goes to show that for clothing brands obviously they'll put our design they'll put our product and they'll be like okay cool next marketing and they put all this money into marketing or whatever, and then they're like, wow, all this money's wasted and nothing's happened. So with, with, yeah. the reason I like what you did so much is because it's all organic. You spent a little mm. bit of money, but you didn't spend as much money as your typical brand would. And, it, and with that kind mm. of information, you really get to test your product and see if it's something in demand, something that people want. And a lot of brands kind of, um, a lot of brands, they kind of get that wrong and they're not, yeah. they're not focusing on the product and getting that product right. And then they don't know that their product, people don't even want their product. Sometimes it's not the marketing, it's just like people just don't, really don't want your product. So with you- They don't follow like, it. Exactly. So with you and the organic marketing, it's like, cool, it's, it's proven that people want it. People are showing interest. So uh, I think that's a good kind of learning point for you know brand owners watching this. Why do you kind of think the strategy worked for you? I think the thing was like, again just like creating hype around something that didn't exist yet (laughs) i know that sounds really weird to say but like like it didn't exist yet and and the fact that people kind of like i i I don't know really i think the thing is like people were showing it love and because it was getting so much love and attention and only had a few posts up which is really important actually like only put a few posts up when you're first starting out because they'll rank a lot higher than if you have like 10 posts, you know, mm. um, these, these posts were like getting a bunch of likes uh, and comments and like, like for such a small brand as well. And it hit the Explorer page, mm. you know? And so that's, that's when it kind of like start to like, gold mine for exposure. Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying so, it's kind of like the social proof that kind of got people, you know, to kind of mess with you more. Yeah. 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 And then going back to like, how I was liking people's stories and stuff. It was, I would go through, uh, I'd go to a brand that I personally liked, that I thought was like 
within the same niche or like uh, you know similar similar to my, my brand and yeah. I'd be like I bet that they like this brand so let me like hit them up and that's how I'd find people to like their stories and, mm-hmm. and it, it'd be genuine if it was a blank page and there was like nothing on it like there's no point in me liking anything you know like yeah. but if they've got like content up like modeling pictures whatever it may be like clearly they're into clothes so you yeah. know they might be into my yeah exactly so. uh, that's definitely a good uh, strategy that you kind of laid out I definitely uh, and kind of the reason that you explained about behind why it works uh, I think you summed it up quite mm-hmm. well as well so obviously uh, this kind of relates back to a point I said before for all of this to kind of work you have to set up the correct infrastructure for your brand you can't kind of mm-hmm. put something out and expect the same results we, and we have to make that very clear because we don't want people coming back commenting oh wow I did all of this work and it didn't work you kind of have to yeah. uh, set up your brand correctly uh, and you know kind of make a good plan and set up a good brand firsthand so that this plan can actually work when you go to execute it so in terms mm-hmm. of kind of setting up the infrastructure uh, and executing the plan how do you go about that like what are your kind of tips to clothing brands who who maybe don't want to replicate it but you know want to do something similar uh, to yeah. what you did to your strategy um well essentially like what you want to do is you want to create a logo that stands out that's like super it can be super complex or super simple but like nowadays people prefer simple logos right Mm. uh so get something that's like bold that actually like can represent your brand that isn't just some random image of like the internet like be creative with it um like find inspirations that you know you can use in that logo because that logo is like that's what represents you you know Mm. and in terms of starting out um i i i originally was gonna just you know um print my logo on some t-shirts but then i was like i was like that's not it's not gonna do anything you know like people don't care about that logo they don't yeah. care about and yet you yeah, know exactly. they it's it's like if you print something random on a t-shirt that no one's going to care about it because yeah. there's nothing behind it you yeah, know i definitely like uh, that point i think a lot of kind of brand owners need to take that in uh you know starting off with slap your logo on a t-shirt that as a, as a design it's not it's not necessarily bad but when you're starting off that as a design is just not exactly the look you kind of want to go for you want to put something out there that represents you as a brand and then lay it on exactly. down the line you can do the text logos and all of that stuff exactly exactly like until you get to the stage of like you know maybe not balenciaga and shit like that but but you know until you've got like maybe like i don't know like 15 to 20k like people aren't gonna care you know yeah like yeah. the the thing is like you have to create designs that are like eye-catching like like pieces like main pieces that people are gonna remember mm-hmm. you know so that's kind of what i did you know i didn't create a piece with my logo plastered over everything yeah, yeah i did the t-shirts with like that said saints virtuous but i had a design on the back that's like completely different uh, it wasn't like my logo that i printed on it it was like just you know, a, a, a font and yeah. just a design altogether. Yeah. You know, and then on the hat, I did like a completely different logo, which uh, I'm, I'm gonna keep using, you know, throughout the throughout me all my drops, you know. And so I have two kind of logos that I'm like using. So so that's kind of what I did. I, I didn't plaster my logo everywhere. Mm. That's the main thing. I just created a unique piece that yeah. looked. Cool. <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely understand that. It's a good point as well. Um, Next thing is promotional material. Like, yeah. if you don't have anything for drop day or anything leading up to drop day, no one's gonna care again. Mm. So, like, have stuff that like, look at ads that you would click on and try and replicate those. Yeah. You know, that's the best advice because yeah. that's how you get clicks. How, that's how you get yeah. people to your website. Yeah. Yeah. And then, kind of pricing everything right. You know, like don't have like the the biggest mistake i made even with this brand was i priced everything so high 
because I was like, oh yeah, this this is gonna do so well because I saw the hype and it did it did it did the the three k in the first like you know mm. week basically uh, or first couple of weeks um, but like over time I realized ah uh, like you know that I've got a lot of people that can't afford like this expensive item and it's like well it it, it was I I priced them at eighty pounds mm. which is like. For a hoodie, that's not bad in the space. Yeah, 80, but like, 80 pounds for a hoodie, like what you're offering, I think is a very good kind of decent price. I think it's almost like yeah. a landmark price. Yeah, yeah. True. But in that, like, I'm like humble enough to be like, all right, <laughs> let me split that. So I, did, <laughs> I that's what I've done. I yeah. split that price now another 45 each. Yeah. Uh, you know, just because it's like, I want people, I want enough people to have them. Yeah, exactly. You know. Exactly. No, I definitely so, understand. That. I, I think that's a good point as well. Definitely a good tip. Obviously, there's like with the price, whole pricing. It's a sticky one because sometimes you can make it work. A lot of people kind of get away with it, but it all depends on exactly again the infrastructure of your brand. So sometimes you can get away with it, but a lot of the times for starting out brands and like for kind of people like us who are just kind of starting out brands, you're probably better off starting off with that low kind of price mm-hmm. point but I, I just def, it can definitely work I've definitely talked to some people know some people who you know started with those high price points and they've made it work so you know kudos yeah. to them um, in terms of kind of infrastructure is there anything else you kind of wanted to cover and talk over as well yeah there's there's uh, three more things um, the the other thing is have your designs and like have a sample ready before <laughs> before you launch anything because that's like it's, I mean, I did this, I had it ready, but there's always going to be like setbacks. I got everything ready before the drop, but like I, 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 I hadn't ordered it yet because I, uh, I, I, I did like a pre-sale and that's what helped me pay for it. And I put some of my own money into it. So yeah. then I get it out quicker. But even then, like there was delays and there's always going to be delays. So you just want to make sure that like, you know, you, you get it done as fast as possible because people are going to be waiting, you know, and yeah. that's the thing that I've struggled with uh, for this, like, first drop is, especially this time of year, like, it's it's a busy time of year, like, mid-year to, like, December, it gets busy, yeah, so, nice. so, yeah, just, you know, um, and then um i'd say prepare the shipping for your items like correctly yeah. that should shipping is, me a pain. Shipping is a <laughs> that... pain shipping is a pain yeah 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 that like bro like to send a hoodie to the us it's like it's like 27 pounds yeah which is you know luckily yeah. enough like i had the money to do that but you know i've sorted it now so like for the future is good but Bro, that's another that's another thing. Like, make sure the um all that is set up. Um, and what I can do is I can I'll send you a couple links for people. Like, they can. Uh, okay. It's mostly for like people in the UK because uh, Shopify doesn't let you print off labels uh, for the US for some reason. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. It, at least it didn't let me. So I've yeah. got these like websites that you can use that you can link to your Shopify. That lets you do it like super easy. Okay. You know? Cool. Yeah. And it you, calculates it all for you. Yeah, for sure. Send those over and then I'll be sure to link them in the description and everything. Yeah, yeah. And um, because that's one thing I struggled with. I was like yeah. trying to find a way to print these labels off. Otherwise yeah. I would have to do it manually, which is impossible. So yeah. um get a label printer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the next point. Get a label printer because oh my god, bro. Like mm. I, I wouldn't have been able to do it without a label printer. Yeah. And you can get them cheap, it's like it's like 100 to 150, like you can get a good one, you know? Yeah. So yeah, Jack, kind of uh, rounding up, I think you've said a lot of good points, a lot of gems for people to take away. And yeah, I do really appreciate you coming on here, giving brands, you know, some information, some tips and everything, how to go about their brands. I think a lot of people will find this useful, like I said. So that was pretty much it for the call. Let's look at some key takeaways. Firstly, set goals. This will help you with direction and make it easy to come up with a strategy to help you get to that goal. You'll have a clear vision on the steps you need to take. Next, think of your strategy. Create an incentive, engage, build a community. These are all things that have been proven to help build a following and harvest long-term results. 
These are just a few of the many things you can do. One tip I liked from Jack was to look at ads you clicked on and almost replicate them, but in your own way. We also mentioned the power of social proof. Use that to your advantage. Social proof is people showing that they love your brand. In social media terms, it can be people wearing your clothes, likes, comments, shares, etc. People talking about you, looking up to you and supporting you is social proof. If there's one thing to definitely not do, it's spam. Spam is annoying and sets a bad impression on your brand. I can say this from first-hand experience. Next, put yourself in other people's shoes when marketing. Think about what made you buy something, what pushed you over the edge to make you click on something, what pushed you to make that purchase, was it the social proof or the design? Think from another perspective and find out what people may be thinking. Next, use organic marketing to gauge your product. This is probably the best way to see if people actually want your product. Too many brands pour money into marketing without realizing the product is the problem, not the marketing method. And lastly, set a good infrastructure before doing any marketing. Make a good product. A text logo just on a tee is very unlikely to go far because your brand has no history. It's not known for anything yet. It hasn't fully developed. Once you've built a solid customer base and released a few products, then you can look at releasing text logo pieces. Also present your page well. This includes your logo, your bio, and most importantly, the content. Is your page filled with random content or is it carefully curated to attract the audience you're targeting? This accounts for the website too. Ensure your site isn't slow. While I know you'd want crazy designs for your site, it's also important for it to be simple, specifically in terms of navigation. Simplicity is key for your website. Find the balance between a good design and a simple website. You also want to think twice about pricing. Like I mentioned, it is very possible to price your products at a high point. I've seen brands do it and some brands get away with it. But it's also smart to set entry level prices when you start and create the price points you desire once you are more long term with your brand. Lastly, ensure shipping in stock is ready and set up correctly. Know the shipping costs and prices to charge your customers. Don't let shipping be the part where your potential customers are abandoning their carts. Also have the stock ready to ship as fast as possible. I'm not the biggest fan of pre-ordering because of that reason, but the pre-order method is a good way to get your brand off the ground and that's okay. Just be aware that people are impatient even if they know how long it takes to ship. I see it countless times when people complain about not receiving their order knowing very well how long the brand said it will take to ship. Now that's pretty much it for the video. I really hope you've taken something away and that this has helped you. Please implement whatever you can to further your brand. And if you're thinking of starting a brand, I hope this was useful. If you're a brand and you would like to get featured across our platforms, be sure to reach out. Let me know what you think of these types of videos and comment what other topics I should cover with guests. You can recommend guests or offer to jump on with me. Share this to a friend who needs it. Like and subscribe for more content like this.